Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're going to talk about Rocket Market Bubble. Now, this is a very uh, kind of uh, sobering kind of lesson. So if you want something more exciting, please do not watch this video. Now, one thing you have to understand, it's very hard to understand and grasp the core concept. Why the heck is it so expensive? Like you see a rocket and you see a building and it's like, dude, this building will be here for 100 years and somehow it's cheaper than a rocket that will only work for 8 minutes. What the hell? So you have to understand the rocket industry is completely elite and custom. What does that mean? That simply means think of this way. Normal engineers with normal degrees and education and qualification, they can barely even touch a rocket engines. Why? Because again, it's a completely different world and there is no uh, supply chain. You can't just, hey, call up someone. Like, like for example, let's say you want to make a car. There are hundreds of companies who are responsible for just making the tire and 50, 60 companies just making the valve that goes into goddamn tires and like you know hundreds of companies just making bolts and other companies that are just fine tuning making the washers that go into these lock tights that are used so you can understand there is a whole plethora of world that is like there to support you in rocket nothing is there flat out you have to begin from scratch and you have to do everything from scratch and it was worst in like 1960s when nasa was founded it's like uh, is there a book to how to build a saturn 5 no you have to write the goddamn book so uh, being in that quote unquote bleeding edge not cutting edge they were bleeding edge uh, it's a completely different world it's like best of the best kind of people is needed like either in mind it, i do not mean like you know examination number or something like that like you, you have to be best of the best to even comprehend what the hell is happening there and uh, concept of our structures that we build no matter uh, the bridge building a car or something like that they are all designed to handle a certain amount of energy basically car accelerating engine noise crash course and all that jazz there is a certain amount of energy is designed to handle rockets are on a whole different level basically if you take that energy factor let's say it's 100 a rocket is like bro i don't even start my day like you know at 10,000. so that's the whole reality it's completely bonkers energy for example the metal that you use in your gas stove if you have that uh, gas stove will have easily few kilowatts of thermal energy going to it and it's like bro i got this i can do this all day and it's meant to do that now you go to a rocket engine it's like bro bro like turbine that is running on cold gas that's running on like few megawatts of thermal energy and don't even think about how much thermal energy is there in the goddamn chamber so that's the reality the energy level required here it's bonkers it's like it's on a different level basically their cold side like you know cold gas and all that jazz that's 700 degrees celsius and the hot is 3000 degrees celsius so fundamentally different like jet engine barely comes close to the this kind of bonkers temperature so and another aspect is like the every metal on this earth has a limit and most of them uh, by the time you cross 2000 degrees celsius will lose structural integrity basically they may look solid but if you put pressure on them it's like good they will become like a rubber band. So at 3000, yeah, bye bye. Most will flat out melt into liquid. They will barely able to retain their structural uh, integrity or solid form. So fundamentally, you are designing something that at its core, like at where the things is happening, is reaching as high as 3200 degrees Celsius. Let that sink in. There is no metal known to man that can withstand that temperature. And here's the funny thing. The only way you can cool this puppy is if you have something very cold at the other end. But how cold we are talking about? we are talking about like the worst case scenario liquid hydrogen that is at minus 252 degrees centigrade what does that mean that simply means on hot side is so hot that metal will flat out melt on cold side is so cold the flat metal will flat out break like a glass like you can literally take a normal metal and you freeze that temperature like cool it down to that level you drop it poof it will turn to dust basically it will literally crumble apart so fundamentally the temperature range that people have to deal with on this puppy are bonkers the only thing that even have a higher temperature gradient than this is a, a fusion power plants where they have like a magnetic torques those are using superconducting uh, basically magnets electromagnets so yes those are like absolute zero and uh, the core the plasma core that's uh, reaching as high as like 15 million degrees Celsius but again that's magnetically isolated so there is no physical contact this puppy is touching it's like flamethrower on the another end and freezer on the other end and somehow it still has to intact while remaining very lightweight so you can say it's a completely different thing now we humans are very good at certain things which we call mass production so the moment you take complex things let's say your mobile phone like imagine the amount of technology that goes into your mobile phone and it's just cheap it's like ah who cares man who cares it's like ain't nobody got time for that like you you change that puppy at like every two years imagine that technology in 1990s or 1960s you'll be like what the hell is this magic so reality is mass production can bring down cost of any complicated thing rocket industry is not there yet or not i don't even think it will ever reach that quote and quote smart it's not going to be sold as much as like you know a freaking car so 
that's why it's expensive it's inherently expensive the energy required to handle this sort of situation is very bonkers the stress load on the structures super bonkers the amount of people you need and like the specialist you need like they are rare among the rare so this is fundamentally like every link of the chain of this structure is very expensive it's not expensive because like somebody is like yeah we're gonna exploit people no it's expensive so let's look at the big boys now you have to understand this space industry in the early days was a uh, you know civilized way of showing how mighty your uh, country is basically because to make a space industry you have to have the ability to show your technology without leaking information and uh, basically do it like you know well enough basically because if you go boom while you're doing trying to go to the moon it will be a very bad press day so to say so it was a very uh, civilized way to show how powerful your country is rather than like you know firing icbms at each other so two big uh, giants were there one was soviet union another was uh, nasa now soviet union went bankrupt and dis dissolved their country so they no longer exist so at this point in time the biggest puppy is nasa now nasa uh, this giant works at around 22 billion dollar annually let that sink in 22 billion dollar annually that's like a, it's a yearly income so income would be wrong but basically expenditure then we come to Russian cosmonaut. Now, this Russian cosmonaut runs around $2.5 billion. And uh, you may be like, wait, that's too small. Well, yes, it's no longer at the same might as it used to be when uh, Soviet Union was running the show. So they do not have the bank account, the depth of bank account which they used to have. Then we come to uh, the second biggest, currently, uh, China's National Space Agency, which is running at $11 billion. You're like, whoa, that's expensive. So what they have achieved? These three agencies, basically Russian, American, and Chinese, they are the only three space organizers as of now, as of me making this video that have achieved human space flight let that sink in china have already achieved it and soviet Union, russia basically could not have achieved that if they didn't already uh, did not have the architecture built by soviet union if you remove that past architecture yeah they could not do it they do not have the money for it so nasa china russia these three are the like big giants at this point in time they have a very deep bank account and you cannot come close to competing against this and then we come to second tiers, which are like a non uh, human missions. Uh, then you have ESA. ESA is like European Space Agency, and this puppy is at around 7.4 billion dollars. Then we have ISRO, 1.9 billion dollars. JAXA, Japanese Space Agency, 1.6 billion dollars. So you can get the idea, like billions of dollars is just needed to get started, let alone human mission. Just to get started, just to be taken seriously, you are talking about billions of dollars. It's not a joke, and it's it's. These are annually. This is not like, oh, pay one time. These are annually. This is like a running cost. So this is a very big and expensive thing. So uh, another aspect of that, there is a lot of bloat that you have to go through. What does that mean? That simply means while big countries like uh, basically Soviet Union and Russia, they could have done anything in, they wanted during the Cold War era. But right now there are many rules and regulation. And because every Tom, Dick and Harry is launching their satellite, every Tom, Dick and Harry is trying to make their own space station, uh, there are certain guidelines that have been created and agreed upon by everybody. Every player in the game is agreeing to this. It's like that's how the game is played. So if you launch a spy satellite, you have to, uh, don't, you don't need to disclose what the heck that satellite is but you have to disclose this is a satellite this is the rough dimension box of it and uh, like it, this is the orbit because if you do not tell that there is a risk somebody somebody normally some uh, other com company in your own country or some other country would launch something normal it's like hey this is a, a weather satellite normal satellite and boom collision happened because you did not tell which orbits to avoid so fundamentally there are a lot of international rules and regulation that you have to follow not only for yourself for every uh, player playing it again and there are national Laws also. For example, uh, let's say China can easily rocket, rocket launch inland, which is flat out not allowed, flat out no go in like every other country. It's like, dude, you cannot launch a rocket where if a failure happens, it could fall on civilized population. That, no, not go. But China it can easily do that. Heck, there are actual footage of stage one dropping uh, next to a school and it had hypergolic propellant in it. Like, uh, yeah, of course, it was a spent fuel, but you can use a hypergolic propellant if it falls near any civilization place. That's a very toxic, tangibly toxic. And there have videos about it like china can do that china is like yolo but you do that in uh, usa they're like bro bye bye your company so you can understand there are many rules that you have to follow before you even get to space like you know you have launched something it has to be like clear of worst case scenario it should not harm civilian population so a lot of rules and regulation we do not think about it because that's not uh, you know mentioned it's like okay this is 900 page documentation that we signed uh, as a spacex to launch this uh you know do this live streaming and do this uh, launch and all that just we don't see that but there is a lot of it 
another aspect is private companies are always subsidiary of these companies basically these national entities they are responsible for, because again okay, it's an international play store so if let's say an indian company uh, launches something and they cause harm to other companies the uh, company won't be held accountable the isro will be held accountable it's like dude what the hell you did like how the heck you applied the clearance to that that's why uh, while spacex can build a rocket while spacex can have uh, money to do whatever they want the astronauts will always come from nasa and uh, nasa will give the clearance a range go and go and not go like again they will give uh, autonomy to there it's like you launch in this window launch in this orbit and all that but they're always nasa will always go, give the clear and if sometimes conflict happen nasa will always overrule them because they are responsible so these are big boys and it's not just uh, as easy even if you have the money like if your country's government is like dude i don't want to deal with this you have to understand that and that was the reason why only uh, nasa has such a you know rich history of private companies because the mistake they made with space shuttle was too severe and they realized they have to use private industry to uh, you know basically climb back out of the hole they dig themselves into so isro only recently allowed this idea only recently indian government is like okay a private company can be made and they can launch actual payloads so you can understand this is very complicated this is what we do not see all the time now competition now competition is generally cure for stagnation now usa was going yolo nasa was like bonkers badass in eight years they built saturn 5 it's like it's hard to digest how quickly that that is like that's faster than spacex let that sink in that's faster than spacex and they had nothing they built the technology that laid the foundation of our modern world that's how fast they were going why because they were competing against whom ussr and they had even bigger pockets they had even you know deeper understanding so and they built some damn awesome some engines it's only their internal politics destroyed them but god damn they were damn fine competitors so you had to compete they were going yolo but what happens one one competitor dies off nasa became loose interest died out there was no absolute uh, war driver as neil administration puts it and outcome was politics started to corrupt it and then it got bloated and then space shuttle happened it was neither cheap nor efficient nor uh, basic it was not anything not even safe let that sink in like uh, saturn 5 was launched not a single individual died when that happened and space shuttle was launched 14 individual died so you can understand that fundamentally space shuttle left, was really really bad and because of the pain the space shuttle caused uh, usa was like dude we cannot accept this like we cannot be in a position where we have to go to russia and be like bro can you send our astronauts to our own goddamn station now again it's calling a bit extreme with their own space station but you get the point so that's why the privatization was necessary for them so benefit uh, falcon 9 this is a awesome rocket flat out mind-bogglingly uh, the most advanced rocket at this point in time because you may say there are other rockets that are more advanced this is human rated it has already carried human safely done go home past tense so flat out awesome things however everything should be done in moderation but if you increase uh, basically uh, competition way too much there are consequences there are side effects and uh, so you may think uh, there is how much competition is there spacex is there blue origin is there rocket lab is there ula is there and many more so it does reach a point where you uh, end up in a position what we call market saturation and low differentiation what does that mean market saturation means everybody will have the same thing and low differentiation everything will work exactly the same you can see that even in blue origin and uh, basically spacex both of them are running on cryogenic why that's the only high density fuel that is suitable for uh, you know deep throttable engines okay what fuel they are using liquid oxygen it's fixed chemistry fixed we can't change that so that is fixed methane is the best because it's a it's a more dense than uh, hydrogen and not as sooty as uh, rp1 so flat out and every rocket company that is coming to, uh, forward right now sooner or later they will reach that same point it's like how mobile phone happened it's like uh, in early like uh, 2000s mobile phone had personality to themselves uh, now every mobile phone looks like a you know black slab and uh, every mobile looks like a black slab if i don't if i scratch out the company's name and remove the skin or something like that you will barely be able to tell this is samsung this is sony and like what, what, what? barely so that same will happen with a rocket also because physics is fixed uh, periodic table is fixed so fundamentally all rocket will uh, coalesce more or less the same design yes of course there will be different fi uh, fine tuning on that because falcon uh, 9 while awesome it is fundamentally flawed by this basically diameter is diameter is too small that's why uh, you know when they are making starship they're going yellow fat yeah they have to make it fat to be more efficient but you get the point so competition good too much competition has consequences now this is one thing that you have to understand the biggest side effect of too much uh, competition is low profit what does that mean that simply means every player that enters the game they will sell you only on one factor we're gonna be cheaper 
It's like buy our equipment because it's cheaper. It's like how cheap can you go? Like there is a fundamental limit. Let's say for example, uh, this happened. Let's say I'm buying a vice. It's a metal vice. There is a limited cost of uh, how cheap a metal you can do while metal uh, retains a structural integrity. But again, if you still want to make it cheaper, it's like, no, 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 I have to uh, compete against more and make it cheaper. At some point, you will use powdered metal, which is basically fancy sand, again, compared to metal. So you get the point. It's like there is only certain limit of cost cutting you can do before you reach a point where you're compromising equipment. So if everybody tries that, the margin that you have is like, no, OK, I made it for, let's say, $100. I can sell it 100.1 that's not good enough that's flat out not good enough and because space industry is inherently not a high demand industry it's not gonna be like okay every tom dick and harry is gonna like you know uh use the rockets no like even the people say oh cubesats are the next big thing again it's a hype it's a tool for students not a final product and can you imagine let's say uh, tomorrow spaces which have already launched 700 plus satellites for their startling constellation somebody tells them hey can you add just a you know just add a small module for camera module and we'll keep experimenting on that they will have the largest uh, imaging satellite network ever on this planet they will not like they will exceed everything uh, government can do they will exceed everything every other companies combined can do why because they have just so many like they have so many they could literally have one sensor just for uh, like one satellite ah, it only has infrared man another sensor ah, it only has like you know uh, ultraviolet another sensor oh, only has R another sensor G and B but because they have so much they will have so high throughput data and because all the uh, basically satellites they have have ion thrusters they can retain their low earth orbit for almost two years which every other system will fall out of the sky before that so Fundamentally, you get the point. There is no demand, like, you know, infinite demand. There is a demand, but not infinite. There is like one or two Google Earth. One or two company will pay you a lot of money to make Google Earth, but there are not hundreds of companies. There is no demand for it. So reality is there is no infinite demand. So you are fighting for a small stringing pie. And the first thing, the first thing that gets compromised is R&D. And you can see that in camera companies, you can see that in mobile phone companies, like there is no whoa happening anymore only big companies can do that because they have such a large sales volume to compensate for that and that sales volume will not happen in rocket industry because there is no demand so outcome of that will be company will no longer be like you know going bonkers in the next r d department so that will be the first side effect and it's never suitable for long run it's something you can do for one or two years then you have to go to high profit margin so fundamentally this is a very uh tricky situation to be now at this point in time uh, while i'm making this video i've uh, figured out that there is around more than 20 uh, rocket companies in india again some companies are only uh, focusing on making children more excited about uh, science and technology which is awesome that i i enjoy but there are like many companies that are making uh, launch platforms like you know i have a rocket which can uh, you know apply cheaper uh, basically services than PSLV or um, small satellite launch vehicle if it gets done. But here's the deal. All of them are saying the same thing. It's like use Skyroot, you get cheaper uh, tickets. Use Bellatrix, you are getting cheaper tickets. Use uh, Agnikul, you are getting cheaper tickets. Uh, use another company, you are getting cheaper tickets. But that's the reality. It's like everybody is giving cheaper. How cheap can you make it? So it's not very uh, affordable or long term sustainable. Now, let's come to reality. Now, this thing happens every time uh, something new hits the market, which we call bubble. So every time something new, whoa, thing happens, every Tom, Dick and Harry starts to invest in it and a bubble is created and then it pops and everybody loses their job and loss of life also occurs. So this is a very serious thing and it is common, happens all the time. It's, that's the sad part of it. It's like we never learn. So like the most bonkers thing I ever heard as in like, a, you know, economical bubble was Dutch tulip bubble of 1637. Yes, we were stupid back then also. And then I'm pretty sure most of you are old enough to realize the dot com bubble that happened in 1900. Damn, that was like, oh, you are making a company. What do you have actually? Like, what services do you do? Like, what do you actually do? Oh, nothing. We just have a dot com. Damn, money, bro. Money, put money in there. What the hell? That happened. Like, that literally happened. People lost their everything because of this dot com bubble. And then let's not even go there. Like, you know, US uh, housing bubble crisis of 2008. Let's not go there. So, this is very normal. Every new industry triggers some kind of like you know rush it's like let's do this like you should always apply caution before investment and when i'm talking about investment i do not mean money only i also mean uh, your mental state basically if you start to invest in like i want this company to succeed like just personal emotional investment you do that with 10 20 company and most of them will fail you will be jaded and emotionally distraught so to say you will be in a bad position let's just put it that way you will be in bad position and you do not want to do that investment of any kind is investment it's like you have to be cautious with it for example solar roadway 
such a bad way like i also fell for that i'm not going to deny that i was a stupid boy who actually believed that thing and not even one brain cell in my brain was like don't this is stupid and yes the politician fell for it because public was asking for it and they built road in france or somewhere else like i think there are more than one idiot that have done this in more than one places and they're like yeah lay down the road and it's like yeah it broke in five days and normal solar panels have warranty of 25 years so reality always hits us in the face and we have to be cautious and mindful there is no there is no scenario where you have infinite demand where every company can succeed where you know you know just be very mindful i'm seeing this pattern which is like kind of scary to me it's like dude way too many companies are coming and all of them are saying uh, cheaper is right this space and like everybody is doing that is so the reality is kind of uh, scaring me at this point and that's why i made this video so this was my presentation on the rocket bubble hopefully you liked it learn from it in that case please hit the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press this like press it twice to show me your disappointment please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching